Don't be afraid of feelings. Let them come up and be released. That's a quote by Shakti Katharina Maggi in Rhonda Byrne's book, The Greatest Secret. And today we talk to Shakti in this episode of Letting Go and the Greatest Secret. I'm Hale Dwoskin. Shakti Katharina Maggi is a living embodiment of truth, which is a rare gift. Shakti has been sharing a message of awakening to our true nature of one consciousness, of non-duality. Her approach of self-realization is very contemporary and reveals the real possibility of discovering our divinity at the very core of our humanity. She's known for her wisdom, humor, and heartfelt connection. When I interviewed Shakti, she was in a vast space and her voice was echoey and lively. I think you'll agree that her beautiful essence shines through in what she shares with us. Well, let's just start with the question, what is awakening? It's a it's a one million dollars question, isn't it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> what what is awakening? Well, you know, if I would have to say it in a nutshell, is the sometimes sudden, sometimes slowly sneaking realization that we are not just this body mind, that we are something much bigger, vast, loving peaceful, silent, radiant. We are one consciousness living through seven billions of forms, plus all the vegetables, trees, flowers, bees, animals of the planet. We are a living being, radiating, uh, expressing itself, manifesting itself, learning about itself through forms. And and this realization is something that uh, is not happening to a person, but is happening through the human form. So this one consciousness through the human form, sometimes instead of being identified just with the little idea to be this bundle of bones and flesh and blood, this consciousness realized to be the creator of everything we see, the dreamer of this dream of life and the dream. Very well said, very well Mm -hmm. said. I I love something you just said. You said learning through all the forms. And, you know, we we forget that part, I think. I think we're so focused on how we can discover the truth of who we are that we forget that this whole that we are is already experiencing through all phenomena and learning through all phenomena and can you speak just a little bit more about that? Yeah, this is truly fascinating, you're right, because the journey of the human being, it's, you know, it's a journey of consciousness learning. So we think we are a human being looking for God or looking to realize our transcendental nature, where actually we are a transcendental being learning through the human experience about itself. It's kind of the other way around. We are this divine learning. And the way in which the divine learns is through matters, through manifestation, through lifetimes, through experiences. And when we, we remember this, we can also take in consideration that hard times, times of crisis, like the one we are living now, are the way sometimes in which the lesson gets through in a better way. So nothing is wasted, no lifetime is useless or wasted. Everything is extremely important. Our experiences, even the most negative one, even the one that we say, why did I do that? Why I wasted so much time in my life, you know, chasing that experience or that person, for instance, that is relevant, is important because consciousness is learning. Is learning through all of us, you know, the little ones and the big ones, not just masters and teachers, you know, or enlightened beings, but through everybody, you know, consciousness is having a very precious experience because it's sharing it 
with the entire consciousness. When, when you learn something, when I learn something, it's not personal. You know, this knowledge is shared in the global mind. So it's precious, incredibly precious, is a gift for everybody. That's beautiful. Do you think that's part of the reason that that awakening in general, this whole topic right now has really exploded? I mean, with Rhonda's new book coming out, it's reached, but even before then, there were a, a century ago to talk about non-duality was uh, was reserved for a fortunate few who worked hard on themselves for decades before they were even told about it. Yeah, and they they were first got brought through a whole series of non-dual teachings, but now it seems like this understanding is just open. And absolutely true. It's absolutely true. It's increasing, expanding. It's infectious, you know. <laughs> it's, it's very it's, infectious. And, and, and it's not personal, you know. I, I, you know, even in my limited lifespan experiences now, you know, I've been formally teaching since 2011, more formally, more exposed, but I started to share um, because my teacher recommended me to since 2003. And already in 2003, the amount of people that were really getting what was shared was much less than now. Now, you know, you meet people that have done sometimes not even like a traditional path or anything, and they're just continuously waking up. And maybe they bump into this kind of talks because they want to figure out what is happening to them. So yes. It's, it's something, it's like, you know, it's a wave of awakening that is impersonal. Once again, as we said before, it doesn't happen to a person, it's happening to consciousness and it's manifesting through force. So also through the human being. Yes. You know, the planet is awakening, you yes. know, not just people. Well, it's probably, it's probably beyond the planet, but yes, absolutely. Yeah, abs yeah because <laughs> it's, it's a universal, it's a universal uh, is the universal laughter, is a universal uh, radiant way of joy. You know, the, the universe is the answer to the ancestral question, what am I? You know, yes. the void asks itself, what am I? God asks itself, what am I? And the answer, it's us. It's the universe is the answer to this question. And it's still unfolding. It's not that he answered. It was answered and it's over. The, the answer is going on, you know, yeah. is living now. Right, right. This is the answering. Exactly. It's an answering. <laughs> exactly. That's right. That's beautifully put. Beautifully put. Thank you. Thank so, you. So isn't really the only, well, one of the main obstacles is that we forget and we take it personally? We, we, we forget what we are, you know, right. even this, this oblivion, you know, it might, it might look like, like it's a curse, you know, why we forget and then we reach central understanding and then maybe we die without finishing and then we have to reborn again and then we forget and it looks like it's a curse. Yeah. But in reality, this forgetting is a gift. I hope I'm able to pass the grace of it. But, you know, God, the divine life, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, cosmic intelligence, Sophia, you know, it doesn't matter the name you're using, needs to have in the game of duality on this dimension, it needs to have the forgetting to have the conscious remembering because everything in this dimension uh, functions through polarities so to have a self-recognition to have the divine suddenly becoming aware of its own divinity you need to have the forgetting so it's not a curse it's actually a gift because without it you would not have evolution you know so so I know it doesn't look like that, but it is, you know, it's even ignorance is precious yes. in this perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, the, everything is precious from this perspective. Yes. Yes. 
That's beautiful. Again, beautifully put. I think that's going to, even just hearing that, I think is going to be a relief to many people. Because again, what you said is that some people like you did, it's just all at once you recognize the truth of who you are. And it's been deepening and unfolding since then. But for many of us, what we experience is a remembering or um, a noticing what's true mm. and the mind comes back and there's a noticing what's true and then the mind comes back. Yeah, it's a, it's a flip-flop, it's a flickering. Yeah, and, yeah you call yeah. that flickering. But, but I think many of us feel every time we fight with the, the forgetting and and we resist the forgetting and we rail against the forgetting but if if we recognize that that the forgetting is also part of the process then we don't have to fight with it and it do, it's not as uh sticky would you agree with that i i yeah absolutely the this this process of you see deepening in the realization of what we are is a journey of a lifetime you know because awakening is no moksha you know it's not liberation final liberation is when all our residues of personal self are dissolved and there is no need for further reincarnation and you know the journey you know often starts with a recognition but then the point you know the real spiritual life sometimes is after awakening right. really in embodying this realization day by day in discovering day by day how going through fears you know transforming alchemically these fears into joy of being has to be done and and sometimes it's difficult you know because maybe there are areas in our life where we don't want this message to enter when yes. we want to keep things personal <laughs> yeah, right? we, we're yes. high, we, 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 we were play, still playing hide and seek but but and, and that's why you know sometimes we feel oh my god I lost it you know yes I found it I lost it and in a way the found I found it is wrong as I lost it yes Be yes you know because because the, the witnessing that we're speaking about the conscious recognition that we're speaking about is always present that's why I stress out don't worry if patterns of ignorance conditioning you know is emerging in you because these are necessary waves that are emerging to be cleansed awareness never goes away you know the the, the love the peacefulness we are is not going away is watching those waves coming is watching those patterns emerging and the only thing is as to us to us is stay with them in our heart to to sit with them to transform them through this loving gaze of awareness mm. you know when sometimes i say to explain this to people you know when you feel really down you know when you like you know bruised to the bones you know with sorrow and you want to go to your friends and just empty yourself out and tell them what is going on for you you don't want so much they tell you their opinion on things you just wanted them to listen to you you know silently saying you know with a cup of thing in their hands and say nodding and say i know i know my love i know my dear and that's the way in which we should approach these patterns of conditioning of ignorance in us you know just silently listening you know to become to ourselves these loving friends that doesn't want to tell us many things but wants to listen is able to listen you know that's in a way the secret it's, can you speak more about uh, how once you've gotten a taste how to just be present and allowing for the unfolding yeah, well, it's very rare in my experience that somebody, you know, see this and stay in this recognition, you know, in a steady way, because the, the gravitational force, you know, of the ego is strong. Yes. So it's like sometimes you see the truth, like you're watching through the keel, you know, of a door, and, and it's interesting because the keyhole has a shape, and so your vision of truth will have that shape. Yes, yes, yeah? definitely. Yeah, yes, if you yes. know what I mean. I and, do. and then you 
<laughs> and so you think, oh, that's the truth. And maybe you meet somebody else that has a different keyhole and you say, no, 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 that's not the truth. You know, my keyhole is <laughs> right. Like... <laughs> There's a lot of that. My keyhole is better than your keyhole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or my teacher's yeah. keyhole is better than yeah. your teacher's of keyhole. Of course, of course. <laughs> so as you, as you go ahead, you know, you discover that the picture is much broader and bigger than you expected. And you discover that there are many, many ways, you know, to see the same things and to express it. But this is another, you know, is another discourse altogether, just to mention it. But so you see through the keyhole and, and then like the light that is shedding upon you is so strong, you know, and it's dissolving some part of conditioning in that like initial glimpse, you know, in that initial opening. But then sometimes it's, it's too much for us to take in. We are yes. not emotional, physically even, energetically ready to stay in that radiance. So we have to kind of like go back. And I thought we don't go anywhere, you know, we're always here, but it looks like we go back and I have to do our homework. We have to wash the dishes, you know, the dirty laundry. And, and that's period in which like, you come back to the conditioning and you review the conditioning through this new understanding. And then like, maybe you have once again, another opening, you know, and maybe you say yourself, that's it. Now I'm enlightened, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the job is over. And, and of course, you know, you live in a honeymoon for maybe some weeks and months or even years if you're lucky. And then once again, you know, the laundry comes until you understand that this, Dirty laundry, it's not a curse, once again, it's necessary. You remember when we said before about learning? Uh? Yes. We are here to dissolve patterns of ignorance. We are here as transcendental being, meeting the ignorance and transforming it into wisdom. You know, if we want to use, once again, some Sanskrit words that people can then look at them, you know, uh, by themselves, from avidya maya to vidya maya, from an illusion that is pregnant with ignorance to an illusion that is shining with wisdom. So this, this uh, reviewing patterns of conditioning is not endless. This is good to know. It's not endless. It looks like endless sometimes, right? Yeah, because, it feels that way too. <laughs> yeah, because, because, you know, it looks endless because sometimes the same pattern, you have to process it layers by layers you know it's it doesn't go in one go it's like one layer one layer one layer one layer and then it's gone but you know it might take years or a lifetime entire lifetime or more than once to to uh, dissolve what you came here to dissolve and in the meantime you're not in hell you are already in paradise if you understand that uh, you are here to live life as it is with all the pains, the sorrows, the defeats, the sickness, and the, you know, the joy of life. It's not in avoiding experiences, but in resting in such a place that you can stay with any wave. You can see the beauty of sadness as depth or the authenticity of pain or the passion and clarity of anger, you know, just to mention things. So you learn to stand in a place in front of life that you love it as it is. That's the art of living. My favorite parts of my seminars and retreats are when we go into the part of us that is love, the part of us that is pure, radiant, and completely accepting love. You talk a lot about heart and the importance of heart um, yeah. in your teachings. Can you tell us more about that? Sure. So I often refer to the importance, importance of the heart. And of course, the heart is not a physical yes. organ. Yeah. Yes, yes. The heart is uh, where consciousness abides in the human form. So is that part of us that knows without knowing how he knows? It's that part of us that is 
resting behind all experiencing with loving awareness and is able to meet in its neutrality, in its softness, in its total openness and innocence, all the experiences of life. So that is the place that we can rest in in any moment already right now and stay with those waves of life that are bringing us lesson and gift. So descending in the heart means to let go of our usual attachment to the mental narratives, to our self-importance to the mental narratives and descending in this mystery of the heart where we can burn that ignorance, let go, let God and be. I'm of course uh, synthesizing this, you know, but living from the heart is, is something to be walked, not so much to be talked. Right. And, right. As, and ask uh, as to us sincerity, honesty, courage, to unmask ourselves and to be real, whatever this means for us. That's beautiful. <laughs> I'm, I sound like a broken record, but I, that's my initial response. <laughs> <laughs> Every time there's yeah, a pause, a pause in the, co the conversation. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I am glad that we are on the same page. Yeah. I, we, this is the first time we meet, but it's beautiful that we can share the same vision. Oh, yeah. it's, it's exquisite to me. You have people come to you all the time in varying uh, at varying levels of this unfoldment. What are some of the things that you found the most helpful to tell, again, you've already said so much that I, I think will be supremely helpful, but what are some of the other things that, that pe when people come to you that they found, find the most helpful? Well, the first thing that is coming into my mind, I don't know is the, if this is the most helpful, is that very often when I have like long time seeker, uh, they are, you know, they've seen much, they experience much, they know much. And sometimes one of the difficult things is to let go of our peak experiences, mm -hmm. let go of our moment of glories, you know, with God, and um, just staying here in the nitty gritty. <laughs> Right. <laughs> right. And, and, you know, sometimes, you know, the spiritual ego is, is, is sneaky, you know, is mischievously creeping upon us. And, and maybe we think, you know, we hold on to those memories that were beautiful, we cherish them. But as long as we hold on to them, we cannot stay with the lesson of uh, uh, our Sadhguru, our ultimate guru, that is life. And so that is sometimes helpful to remind people, yes, you had this, you saw this, you know, you understood that, let it go now. Just be here with me, with an open heart. You know, let's be here together. What a gift with no agenda, just me and you, you know, like here. Hmm. And, and a lot of things drop when we do that. And, and also, you know, another thing that I think is important, this one is for maybe beginners, if there is some, you know, I don't think. Actually, really before you say the beginning thing, I just wanted to uh, say something, and maybe this will add to what you said. Yeah. That you, you said, uh, be here with me. You were referring, I believe, in with the interaction when someone's in front of you. Uh, but yeah. the, isn't that, also what you're doing internally that you're being here with the sat guru as yeah. opposed to look sat guru i had this wonderful experience yeah but i'm right here right now ready to to show you whatever's next and we miss that because we're holding on to whatever the experience is i 
I often ask people, yes, but what is the same now? Pointing them back to that. Yeah, so absolutely. Could you comment on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we have to learn to to stay with you know the self in us has to learn to stay with the me basically instead than like seeing that we are you know a little eager looking for the bigger self to welcome us home to understand that what is looking through our eyes what is listening through our ears is the self right now and it, it can stay the self that we are can stay with this false impression of the me so that kind of intimate staying you know that is a speechless love that I was referring with, like, yes. stay here with me. You know, we have to learn it to do it with ourselves. Yes, yes. So, but, but like my comment before is really like, you know, are we courageous enough to let go of what we know and, yes. and abide in the I don't know, as I don't know if it exists in English, of yes, this yes. moment? Yes, yes, it's very queer. Mm -hmm. uh, can't remember what the teacher, which teacher, oh, Rama, Nizagardata uh, said, the only thing, the my, true thing, the accurate thing the mind can say is, I don't know. It's the ultimate. Ultimate, you know? yes. Yeah, it, that is the ultimate understanding because the mind cannot go beyond itself. So the mind cannot know the truth. This is a hard to swallow, right? <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> no, you can be it, but you will never know it. Yes, so yes. It's, it's a very narrow door, but the gift is exquisite if you cross it. Yes, yes, yes. So now I, I interrupted you to, to bring out that little extra piece, but let's talk about the, the, you said there was something that beginners need to hear. And what was that? Yeah, now I don't know if I remember it. But... Well, let's see what comes out. And <laughs> again, you're, I'm sure you're like me when I'm talking to people. I have no idea what I'm going to say next. I, people yeah. say I, I, they apologize for interrupting my train of thought. And I said, I don't have any trains. <laughs> I know, I know. No, no, like I, I am just like dipping into what is coming up because, you know, like I really meet a lot of people. So, uh, yes. Well, actually, what I was thinking to say, it's funny because it's related to what we just said. I was, I was thinking that many people say, you know, like, I feel what you say, but I don't understand it. Should yes. I understand it all? And I say, no, you don't need it. You know, go in your heart, uh, recognize the divine and serve the divine in everybody in your life, you know, and, you know, serve the divine, not the ego in people. And, and then the understanding comes by itself. So you don't need to know it all, you know, just let your heart speak not with words, but as with vibrations in your being to guide you. It's our compass. It's what guides us through discernment. That's what I wanted to say that is actually related to what we just said. So it's so perfect. It is perfect. It is perfect. One topic that sometimes I speak about that um, I think it is it might be relevant to some people is the topic of uh, the divine feminine mm -hmm. and this i think is relevant not just of course it's not relevant it's not a women thing no and I'm, <laughs> and i'm not and i'm <laughs> not mentioning confusion, it. yeah yeah and i'm not mentioning it because my body is female at all but because the divine feminine is really what is emerging right now to me in, on the planet you know, and I'm sure you are watching, you know, the spiritual circles, you know, uh, more and more uh, flooded with this topic, because really, you know, uh, Shakti is rising, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a wave that is asking us to be real, you know, once again, as we say before, to let go of maybe some intellectualism around truth, you know, to let truth not to be something we read in a book or watch in a video, but something we breathe, we walk, uh, something that we touch, we taste. And, you know, this means to go in places that are uncomfortable to us, you know, because sometimes we, we keep, we keep <laughs> truth on a shelf on, on our spiritual book, you know, the spiritual section. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, 
And then like, you know, we are, you know, really nasty with our family or with our partners or we are like, or with our work colleagues, you know, we don't let that, you know, touch us in places that are uncomfortable. So staying with the uncomfortableness, staying with uh, something that is difficult, that is burning in us, is, uh, is uh, really letting uh, this understanding going deeper and deeper and becoming real. We have to give birth to ourselves, And yes. to do that, we have to die to yes. our old self. Yes. And so th the divine feminine speaks of that, speaks of that courage and, um, and also speaks about uh, allowing, understanding that emotions are not something we have to avoid. Sometimes it looks like, maybe not so much now, I think you agree with that, but like yes. some years ago, you know, like emotion were a bad thing, you know, you yes, should. Yes. <laughs> So if you were human, you know, you were wrong and you were getting into spiritual path to get away from your humanity. Right, right, instead, right. Yeah. Instead, like emotions are the female side of the mind, you know, and if we avoid them, you know, try to avoid your wife and then tell me how she is at the end of the day, you know. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Not very happy. <laughs> well, or try to control her even worse. Oh, try even worse. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> a lot of <laughs> a lot of the problems we have nowadays is if we are not understanding that we cannot repress the female, you know, the feminine in us. And this it's not just about women, it's men and women. You know, the repression of women is just an external manifestation of reflection of that. Right. We have to learn to, to stay with our emotions that are uncomfortable and then to understand that they are lifting us to other dimension of understanding. You know, they are not a curse, they are yes. a gift. Yes, yeah. that's, again, beautifully put. <laughs> the, 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 mind, the mind is not here to be stopped. You cannot stop the mind. This is also helpful for a lot of people. Yes. Guys, don't worry. The mind is not personal. This is the mind. Welcome to the machine, the Pink Floyd were saying. You know, like this is the mind. What you see around the world is your mind, is your consciousness. You cannot stop it stop it you don't need to stop it the internal dialogue yes it can be stopped but the mind doesn't need to be stopped stopped so thoughts and feelings are part of the mind it doesn't need to be stopped it needs to be enlightened by your divine grace that's what it needs so you don't need to stop emotions and and, and thoughts that's you know one last thing to do what do you think Yes, I agree. <laughs> totally. Again, it, it's uh, there when there's anything coming up, it's an opportunity or a gift to go deeper or open more to the truth of who or what you are, wouldn't you say? Yes. Like, actually, that's what you just said. I'm just yes. <laughs> paraphrasing it. <laughs> you know, it's okay. It's okay. No, no, I, I agree with you and me. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's like, you know, um, we, don't, we are not here to reach God, but to discover that the God in us can meet the human. Mm. That's yes. another way of saying what we said before. We, there is a shining, shining diamond, a beautiful transparent pearl at the core of our humanity, you know, and it's, it's divine. And so we have just to have the courage to dig and find it. Yes. And, and let it shine too. It's just, the, yeah. the, we, there's a lot of emphasis, I believe, in, in non-dual circles is to find the diamond. But then we forget yeah. to let it shine into all experience. As it, it, we yeah. just kind of guard the diamond and and uh, you know or put it up on a pedestal, as opposed to live it. Yeah. Or, let, or because, let it live us actually. Well, there are there are two forces in the universe uh, that are the two sides of the same one. One is uh, Shiva nature, transcendental force you know from the multitude to the oneness and to the zero yeah 
And then there is another one that is from the zero to the oneness to the multitude. And that is Shakti, is the feminine. So we are here to recognize we are one. And then from that oneness to shun our very unique, precious individuality. So we are here to be ourselves. Right. So, so that's why you were saying, no? So find the gem, find the diamond, you know, recognize what you are and then shine its preciousness in the world in your own unique way. You know, right, and it doesn't right. mean you need to be a teacher. You can be a mom and do that. You know, I, I tell you a little story that is. Oh, is please really go sweet. ahead. Uh, of, of a young guy and it's like he was not even 30 and he actually interviewed me <laughs> some years ago in in Italy and he was uh he was a very simple guy he was working in a supermarket and he was he recognized who he is it was very clear you know and um and he said you know I used to be a cashier you know and I was seeing you know every customer was a Buddha coming to me you know and I was looking at them and shining and I was serving a Buddha. And I say, wow, that's beautiful. And he say, now we get even better. I say, what? You know, I go to the night shift. Now I am just like all by myself in the supermarket, putting every product on the shelf. And for me, it's a total meditation from the first minute to the last one. And they pay me. <laughs> you know? and, and I was saying, wow, you know, I met a Buddha in a supermarket. <laughs> and it is like that, you know, yes, and yes. I, I met people that woke up in prison. You know, I met people that woke up in the most strange situation in a war zone. I'm not kidding. Yes, you know, yes. so really, you know, like we, we are here to shine our Buddha nature in, in our life as it is. It doesn't need to, to change, you know, I don't need to have a fancy name, you know. I, I received this name from my teacher, but I would never, <laughs> I thought people changing name were nuts, you know, until, <laughs> until, it, it, until it happened to me. And when he said it, I felt all my body, you know, shimmering with energy, you know, like, yes. like you know, every time he was saying, I say, oh my God, you know, I had to change it. And now I'm using both of them, Shakti Katerina, yes. I always look to try to give people um, ways to continue to explore this on their own. So how would you recommend people continue to explore this on their own? Well, try to doubt in the next 24 hours, everything you know, mm -hmm. just, just for 24 hours, you know, try to doubt it and move in, you know, when it's finishing this interview, move in the world like you don't know anything of it and see what happens. You know, you meet maybe your spouse or you meet your colleague or your friends. Of course, you still know their names, you know, and, you know, or their story, or you still know how to, you know, uh, drive your car or to open a door. But, you know, walk in that place, meet that person as if it's the first time you go there. Try to abandon a moment the knowing and go in the perception of your senses. You know, for instance, people now are probably sitting somewhere listening to this unless they're walking, I don't know, in a park with the earbuds on. But, you know, wherever you are, you know, like, Stop a moment now and, and listen to your body, to the sensation of the body. Like if you're sitting, like the sensation of the body sitting or the sounds of the place where you are. And listen. Without trying to listen anything in particular, be the listening. And with, with you know, with an innocence of the baby, and you will notice things that you would not notice before. And maybe you would even enter in a place where there is no separation between you and the people around you or the place where you are. You might even go deeper than that and see there is something very silent that is you, that is embracing it all. 
that's the little practice I would give. That's a beautiful gift. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I highly encourage everyone to explore that. And by the way, if you like it after 24 hours, try 48. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, I, I, live, I live like that all the time. It doesn't matter how hard is your life right now. It doesn't matter how it looks difficult the situation you are in. You can stay with it. On some level that you don't remember, your deepest self is choosing this experience, even the most difficult one. And is choosing to meet it, to learn about love, about you. So if you are scared, open your heart. And, and if it's difficult to do that, ask the divine to open your heart and receive the lesson that is arriving. We are in this moment in times in which we are in extreme need to stay in our heart because we are put one against the other, you know, there is so much division. And we are, we are here to find in the neutrality of the heart, a third way, you know, another way of living that we are all looking for. So don't get discouraged. You can stay with this, you can pass it through. You just need to use your heart as a shield, a weapon and a door. I hope you enjoyed our time with Shakti Katharina Maggi as much as I did. You can learn more about her in the podcast notes for this episode, including her messages, free recordings, and events. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please give us a five-star rating, subscribe, and share it with the people you care about. If you'd like to learn more about my work and the Sedona Method, please visit Sedona.com. As you explore our site, you learn how to be free of the feeling of fear, how we can all live from the heart and from the Buddha nature at our core. I have books, courses, events, and plenty of free material to explore. Again, go to Sedona.com. That's S-E-D-O-N-A.com. Thank you for being here, and we'll catch you on the next episode of Letting Go and the Greatest Secrets.